Hey folks, how are you doing? Uh, Yago Kiri here from HS Press. Thank you so much for coming through. Um, we're super elated, excited. We just kind of, you know, um, that Minerva Lerna is joining, is joining us today and uh, doing uh, what we're calling fabric scrap zines. Again, uh, we did not invent this, this format or, or zines, but we're trying to push the envelope uh, to see like what they can be. And Ultimately, I don't have the answers, but it's really interesting and, and helpful to kind of find find out. Um, uh, Minerva, um, she's 16 years old. I, I think the, um, this bio might be, so she might be a little older than 16, but young, awesome artist, poet, DJ, curator, copy editor, zinester, postmodernist. Right, so inspired by Riot Girl and grunge fashion, she has been collecting vintage lingerie and has been integrating it into her artwork. Uh, and and this is really what um, kind of inspired us to to you know reach out to um, Minerva and see, hey, are you busy? Could you do like a workshop for us? We'd be really uh, stoked. Um, now is the part where I shut up and allow, please, Minerva. Um, introduce yourself, tell us, you know, whatever you like, okay? I, I'm really, really, I'm pretty much like as new to this whole marriage of the two media as you are, um, more or less, and so I'm excited to embark on this journey with you. Um, I think what we're going to do first is um, do kind of a demo for folding a threefold zine. Um, and then start assembling our own fabric scrap zines, um, but just running down a list of, because it's kind of a material heavy um, class, uh, what you should have with you, and I don't think it's the end of the world if you don't have it, but um, would be useful to have. Uh, printer paper, so like thin like letter paper, as well as cardstock or thicker paper. Um, if you don't have both of them, I'm sure you can kind of make it work, <laughs> um, but I think probably for the best, like, um, of both sides of this workshop, both the folding and then also the assembling the fabric scrap zine, it'd be good to have the two. Um, you should also probably have a ruler, um, just because you want, yeah, your pages to be uniform. Um, and of course, fabric scraps, scissors, and a glue that works with fabric. Um, if you don't have like fancy fabric glue, I've been using just like school glue and a glue stick and it works totally fine. Um, so unless you have like heavy gemstones or beads, I think you should be good with just a glue stick. Um, trying to think anything else scissors i said um thread if you want to embroider um i just started um kind of working on a prototype i was embroidering and i thought that turned out pretty cool so if you want to sew anything that would also be good to have um i guess we're just letting everyone kind of gather materials um are we all and yeah if everyone's ready we can get our cardstock out um, I don't know what size paper they sell cardstock in, um, so if you have, like, thicker paper and it's not 8.5 by 11, um, does everyone, first of all, does everybody have, like, a thick paper, kind of heavy weight? Okay, um... If, if it's hard for you to get one, think about those manila, like, the folders that we have. Like, right now I'm going through my folders and seeing if there's, like, a, like, an errant one that I can just kind of tear up and use as cardstock. Um, that I, I like to use that as cardstock because it's like thick but not too thick. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. I think for one of my like recent zines, I didn't have cardstock on me, and I used an old certificate of graduation um, <laughs> that was yeah on thicker paper, <laughs> um, and it worked. <laughs> so um, if everybody's got some kind of thick paper, um, I guess the first step would be to cut it to size because what we want is eight and a half by eleven. Um, so cutting that down in whatever way I feel like I should like ask everyone, is there cutting that needs to happen? Does everyone just automatically have eight and a half by 11? Do I need to give you guys time to cut stuff down to size? Give us two minutes. Um, Cause I'm, I'm making, I'm making actually some cardstock right now. Okay. So just, if you don't have it, uh, we'll just give you like two minutes to cut it so that you can have it and be able to use it. Thank okay. you. I'll mind the clock. Yeah. The only thing I love most about, about people who make zines is that they'll never say, oh, we don't, I don't have this or that. Or, I always feel kind of zines like the first to be like, well, let's try it. It, it might work. I have cardstock. I don't have cardstock, but I have folders. Let's see if I can make it into cardstock. And surprisingly, it's kind of a beautiful ethos to have for life, you know, because it's never, 
It's not, I don't feel like it's ever, you know what I mean, easy, right? I mean, even when it's easy. So, thank you, uh, Minerva Victoria. Like, this is a great way for car stuff. So, just using a piece of paper as an outline. Great. Thank you. Yeah, so if everyone's got some kind of thicker paper card stuff situation going for them, um, we can kind of, yeah, get started with building up a fabric routine. So, I wasn't sure if I wanted to, like, show you guys some inspiration, talk about my own work with fabric, um, or just kind of launch into things. But I realized that probably the best inspiration any of you can draw, outside of, like, you're already, you know, carefully influences and everything you're bringing into this, um, is the fabric that you have. So, I know how much everybody's got on them. I have, like, a 20-pound bag at my feet. a ruler um and measuring along the 11 inch side you should make marks at um hold on let me align this okay um you should make marks at uh 2.75 so that's two and three quarters at five and a half inches and at 8.25 that's eight and a quarter inches um i can put that in the chat also i feel like that's a lot of numbers i don't like numbers and they're hard for me to remember so you know what let, let me do that um can you just repeat them again so so i get yeah. it right so marks at 2.75 inches, 5.5 inches, and 8.25 inches. And that's along the long end, the 11 inch side. So sorry, 2.75, 8.5, and... And, oh, 8.25, um, and 5.5. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then down the short side, the eight and a half side, you're just going to make one mark at four and a quarter inches. And you said eight and a quarter, right? Four and a quarter on, the, on the eight and a half side. Yeah. And if you make that on both sides of the sides, um, like if you make your, you know, three marks along your 11 inch side here and here, and then your one mark along your eight and a half side here and here, then you should be able to connect them with your ruler and draw that line, um, just pencil or something easy to erase, although I'm pretty sure it's going to get covered up. Um, but making those lines, you should end up with a grid of eight pages the way we just folded. Um, so the, those will serve as your sort of delineations for pages. You'll know what your constraints are when you do end up copying and folding this. Um, but this cardstock, we're never going to fold. We're just going to scan eventually um, later when you're done. Um, and then uh, kind of, yeah, fold accordingly as we did in the demo. Um, so I can show you kind of what mine looks like when I've delineated. Ignore the fact that I've started prototyping on one page um, and also scribbled things. Um, but if you can see, they're very faint. I made my... Uh, sort of grid of eight, um, and I already started mapping out pages. We all... Okay. Um, so those are your eight pages. Um, you can choose to adhere to those page boundaries or not. Um, I think I'm going to have some fun probably toward the middle of the zine with um, sort of playing across those boundaries and bridging, maybe not even just horizontally, but vertically. Um, so it kind of comes on both sides, I guess, like both halves of the zine when it's folded. Um, or you can stay within those constraints and cut your fabric to size. Um, Again, I don't know what kind of fabric everyone's working with, but I've been having prototyping, having some fun with lace and some sequins. Um, and then of course, embroidering, if that's something you wanna do. I started embroidering some words. Um, and if you guys have like markers or fabric markers or paint, I feel like that could also be fun is kind of mixing um, traditional mark making um, with your more like abstract fabric stuff. But I think with that, we can just kind of get into it. If at any point people wanna like hold stuff up and share, like they find some kind of cool thing you can do with the fabric, um, totally feel free to do that. Um, I think just one thing to kind of keep in mind is that you will presumably be sticking this in some kind of, you know, Xerox machine or scanning this at some point. So you don't want to build it up too high. Um, don't, you know, use scraps of your favorite plush pile carpeting on this thing because you're not going to be able to shove it into things. Um, but uh, usually there's a little bit of space in a Xerox machine, so you should be good. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with, yeah. Like making zines is like uh, talking about music and talking about stuff. Like it, I think again, like zines just also have like a collector's kind of soul. 
Um, and it's just, you know, um, I don't know. We like, we kind of like weird kind of stuff and it's kind of a uh, premium with us, you know, like um, I was like going to work the other day and this guy was uh, listening to blues and I was like, what are you listening to? And he said the most beautiful name. I, I forget it now, you know, but I was like, yeah, I really need to, you know, kind of, I really need to hear more of this, you know, so um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I also, I think I've probably never made a zine that didn't come with a playlist, so definitely a big part of, like, zine culture is sharing music. So we're cutting eight pieces of fabric, correct? If you want, I mean, if you want to isolate your pages, I think probably for some of mine, I'm going to spread a piece of fabric between the two. Okay, just like one big sheet? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just cut eight single pieces, so <laughs> I think I'm going to go with that. Well, thanks for the clarification, um, honestly, because um, I'm, I was kind of, I'm kind of busy here. What I'm actually doing is I'm doing something a little different. I, I couldn't find any textile. I'm using the cardstock and cutting out like mortise kind of cuts, you know, but, um, but thank you for the clarification. Cause you're right. Like I, that's, um, thank you. Um, I appreciate it because I, I wasn't on the ball. So thank you. Yeah. I think working with like an unfamiliar medium, I mean, I don't know how many of you like work with textile regularly, but I think definitely for a lot of people, especially zinesters, it's like not a super like commonplace medium. It's so fun to just like come up with. I mean, even with our like whole, you know, cardstock folder situation and each of us is kind of using a different weight of paper probably. Um, yeah, just like innovating and coming up with like new ways to kind of use the medium that everyone in this room is using. It's pretty awesome. And so we wanted to give just a like a, a kind of 10 minute um, thing. Um, we would like to keep it to an hour because it's Sunday and, you know, we, we all have stuff that, that we got to do and to get ready for the work week and, and all that stuff. Um, but I just wanted to give, tell everyone, uh, hey, we're, we got about 10 more minutes. I'm having a hell of a time. Minerva, thank you so much. We really, really, really appreciate it. Thanks for the music, the, you know, all that stuff. And, and we're going to keep kind of cutting stuff here but i just wanted to let everyone know thank you yeah yeah thank you guys so much you guys are the coolest i mean everybody who comes sees it's the coolest obviously but um i also wanted to like shout out like absolutely just like i don't know i'll put my website and my zines website well yeah i'll put my website in the in the chat um kind of everything's on there please do movies everything yeah um i'll link my dj hour um and uh yeah totally just like i mean my contact info is on my website but definitely like email me, um, let me know about things. If there are like cool zine events, I'm always looking to get connected. Share music, please. Always looking for music, so. Uh, Minerva, let me ask you a question. Um, the, uh, there's a, a kind of, um, in, in uh, LA, uh, Ziba Zadar is a zinester librarian, and she's also a DJ. Do you think there's a correlation between curating music and curating images in a zine? Do you think there's some type of interplay there? Yeah, I think, I mean, I kind of call it the curator's curse, um, but I, I'm sort of, yeah, I'm like a chronic curator. Um, everything in my, I mean, you guys are looking at my room, this is already like kind of where it all starts, but um, I like obsessively chronicle and curate everything. Um, I make a cassette mixtape every month with all the songs that just belong to that month. Um, I've been doing that for like three years now. Um, I, you know, I make a pretty much a zine every month, honestly. Um, but I used to kind of keep them in more of a series and they were like really serious chronicles and, and logs and kind of journals or diaries. Um, and I, I mean, I love making my DJ mixes and more than anything, I love when stuff comes together under a theme, um, whether it be, you know, images in a zine or um, artists or works of art or songs in my, you know, mixes and sets. So, yeah, I think some people are just just like that. Some people just curate um, and I'm definitely one of those people. Um, it's not always the best because sometimes I feel like, I don't know, it, it borders on obsessive, certainly, 
Um, I think anybody looking at like my pile of cassette decks would tell you that, but yeah. Yeah, I know. I, you know, it's so interesting to me, like, um, when I see people, like, for example, I, you know, like, I'm a librarian by, by, that's how I pay rent, you know, and like, it's always interesting to me, like, I just collect widely, you know, but there's people who are like super focused on what they collect and are very, very, very protective of like the criteria, you know, for something to be added, you know, and it's, it's just so interesting to me because I feel like, I don't know, part of this is like making a zine, it has that diaristic kind of thing, like a journal or like a letter, you know, uh, something where it's like you're chronicling uh, time as it's kind of going, but also part of it, it's a, it's a trip, you know, it's a nice little space time hiccup. Um, and so um, thank you for, thank you for, you know, talking about that and like your process. Cause I think a lot of times I'm also curious, that's what, like, I, I have, we all have our own styles, but I'm just curious about how people do stuff, you know? Like, that's what I think I'm really, like, most curious about. So it's cool to hear other people, um, you know, kind of talk about their process and, like, how they distribute and what their thoughts are. And it's, um, that's what kind of, I think, keeps us all going, you know? Yeah. Thank you. I was just going to remind you, Minerva, to put all, all your links uh, in, the, in the chat. Um, so there's uh, all of uh, Minerva's links, guys, in, in the chat. Um, please um, look, you know, look those links up. Uh, reach out to uh, Minerva. Minerva, would you be interested in doing, like, a, a, a swap, like a zine swap? Totally. Yeah, I was going to mention that when we were talking about distribution is that the number one thing I like hate, hate, hate is spending money on zines. And the number one thing I love, love, love is trading zines. So if you have zines, send me zines. I want to swap with people. I want more zines. My library is very thin. It's just this like metal holder and like nothing else. So it's, you know, always looking to expand. But yeah, I want zines. <laughs> that's that's right. Uh, how about this? How about um, whoever would like to trade zines, uh, put your email like in the chat. And then uh, people will reach out. You know what I mean? I'll just send an email like, hey, you know, uh, let me get your address so I can know where to send it or, you know, what have you. Okay. That might be a, a, a good uh, thing to do just while we're kind of winding down and um, moving on. Does anyone, would anyone like to share? We got about two, three minutes. Um, is there anyone that's like, oh man, I was really, thank you so much. And let me show you what, what, um, what I was working on, you don't have to, um, but if anyone does, please chime in. I guess I've only got like one page that's really done, but I was thinking about what you said about um, like the fabric being the inspiration. And I was like digging through fabric I had for this workshop and I found this like piece of fabric that had the words on it freedom isn't free and i was like wow that's like a really funny phrase um <laughs> and i was like i wonder what else i could spell with the letters and so i was just like playing around with letters and i sort of ended up using mostly like pieces from the word and i don't totally it ends up being a little bit gibberish but like this is one page that i started putting together just cutting up the letters from that piece of fabric and pasting them back together so I don't know what the rest of the zine is going to be, but that's the that's the first page. That's awesome. I love that. That's really, really cool. Yeah, I've got I didn't get to incorporate it, um, but I've got this patch from an old Boy Scout uniform that I'm going to end up putting in this one. It's a little one. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
Um, I don't mind. So my fabric out. actually comes from. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, my fabric comes from my mother's scrap stash. She quilts, I don't. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought using little pieces, I made my cover page, which says patchy backwards right now. So I'm thinking of doing like kind of something that quilt inspired, but with glue sticks mm -hmm. and embroidery thread because th those are more my speed. That's awesome. Yeah. I also, I just, she quilts I don't is such a awesome phrase. I kind of love that. I might like you steal that as a title or something. I've been thinking about band names and that is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good zine actually. They might have to change up what I'm doing. <laughs> or that can be that can be issue two. Thanks for pointing that out. This is all I have so far. Nice. Oh nice. <laughs> it's just background. Um this is some fabric that uh, a friend gave me a while ago. I'm not, I don't have a ton of fabric, so, um, but I like the way the, um, I, I ripped the fabric, so the threads are kind of showing on the edge, and I kind of like that, so I'm going to keep, keep going in that direction. I love that background. I love that background. Um, do you guys mind if I share? So, I had one that I was working on. I've been working on it for like months and I just never, like, I didn't know what to do with it. So I got this idea to kind of like, just cut out uh, kind of, uh, this is like a brain stem, um, just things like a, like a mattress, right? Um, and a pair of scissors um, with also like a kind of chair, I don't know. So I'm gonna keep, um, I'm gonna keep going uh, with this and make it, maybe um, some kind of narrative or something. Um, what what do you suggest, Minerva, for writing on fabric? Is it just like a Sharpie and good luck? Or is there, are, I mean, are there fab, there's fabric markers, right? I've seen those, no? Yeah, there's fabric markers or like paint pens if you have them. Sharpie works totally well. And I was just looking for it and I cannot find it, but I have a like kind of paint pen situation. It's like a white gel pen that I thought would work totally well. Here it is. Um, and I think I'm gonna be using this one on some of my like thinner fabrics. I think probably on like Jersey and cotton, something like this would work out, but yeah. Is that, is that like the white, is that like a white out pen or a fabric? It's, it's just like a white gel pen, but the, since it's white, the like gel itself is pretty thick. And so I think it'll work out for some of my darker, thinner fabrics. Nice, nice. I just FYI, I love using, uh, you know, like sometimes they have those like white out pens. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's just because it's like writing, you know, she's writing in white is so weird. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely love that. That's great. Gel pens, fabric pens, um, and just Sharpies. Um, I do not advise giving Sharpies to a four year old. I've done that recently. Not a good idea. Every other instance of Sharpiness, though, is, is good to go. Um, folks, it's 3.02, I don't want to keep people uh, longer than they should. I'm going to just put my email in the, um, in the uh, chat box, okay? And like we said, um, whoever wants to um, swap, just get an email down, send them an email, and they'll send you their mailing address. Um, please don't forget, um, send... So if someone sends you an email like, hey, I want to swap with you, send them a zine. But don't forget, send the LATL a zine. Send Denver a zine. Send Jenna Friedman a zine. Get those babies out there. Let them, you know, really kind of um, interact with the world. And, you know, um, I wanted to say thank you so, so much to, to Minerva Lerner. Um, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for all the hard work for leading us through this. You know, I, I'm, I certainly feel energized, inspired. Um, Kelsey, thank you so much for sharing with us, Denise, as well. Thank you, uh, Wesley, for like showing us what you guys are working on. That's always, I think, so, so uh, inspiring. Folks, August, uh, we're going to work with uh, Abel Fulgar. Uh, old school zines are from Miami uh, in support of his new poetry collection called Renault 30. He's Venezuelan and touches upon a lot of social justice issues that are happening in Venezuela. You know, um, there's there's a lot of stuff there to parse. And so he's going to help us. Um, his collection is called Renault 30. Um, September is going to be Omandi Pierce. He's going to be doing Manga zine. So if you know 
anyone who's interested in manga, who likes manga a lot, um, like my 11 year old and just like millions of people on the planet, um, tell them to pass through. We're gonna use zines, the, those panels to make uh, manga. And uh, I guess it's all about perspective and, and focus and, and um, all that stuff. So um, thank you again to Minerva. Thank you for showing up, really appreciate it. Um, oh, and say, hey, Jessica, how you doing? I just saw you right there. You hey, yeah, good. We've been oh, working on, on some uh, fabric uh, ourselves with a 14 month old with Sharpie, so yeah. So you, you understand about the Sharpies and the baby. The other day I came in on my kid and I did, he just had it open. He had a mustache, like just looked deranged. It was awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, oh, thank you so much. And, and make sure you guys get the, yeah, make sure you guys get the emails. Thanks for coming through. We really appreciate it. We'll see you in August. We'll see you in September. We're going to do this for a year and no one's going to stop us. So. Thank you so much for coming through. We really appreciate it. We'll see you uh, next month, okay? Thank you, Thank you so much, awesome. Yago and Minerva. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Thank you for coming through, guys. Thanks for spending Sunday with us. We really appreciate it. You guys are dope. Thank you. Bye. Even touch you. Bye.